Well, it started with a challenge from Ira Wallach uh, at a Chinese restaurant in Amman, Jordan. Um, when Ira said to me, if you could do anything to make the world a safer place for my children and grandchildren, uh, what would you do? Founded in 1981, the Institute's first decade had one clear goal, to build trust between Cold War enemies by creating an environment for informal talks and cooperation. The early 80s were a tense period. Uh, there was a, some people called it the little Cold War. Of course there was no trust. There was absolutely no trust. So you needed a place where you could have trust. It was an opportunity to knock on a door that people thought was closed, but you could push it open just a little bit. And John was a pusher. There was a great deal of uncertainty about Gorbachev. The Institute set up a task force bringing together members of the public policy community, academics, lawyers, business people. And our study group uh, basically came to the conclusion Gorbachev is real. It was a front page story in the New York Times. It influenced thinking in the U.S. presidential administration. Uh, the first high-level military-to-military dialogue between uh, the Warsaw Pact and NATO was convened by EWI uh, at, a, at a time when everyone thought we were crazy. This was also true in our work behind the scenes with German reunification. For example, the famous Potsdam Conference. The, the Institute made a major contribution to overcoming the division of Berlin, of Europe, Germany. With the end of the Cold War, the Institute's mission in the 90s shifted to Eastern Europe, easing cross-border tensions and smoothing the transition to democracy. Well, there was a board meeting in early 1990 after the collapse of, of the Berlin Wall. The Cold War is over. EWI was set up to address the Cold War. Why shouldn't we disband? And the answer came actually from our alumni. And that trust we had built with people uh, turned itself in, into a, a special opportunity. That's why the Institute decided to create the Prague Center, a European headquarters. And in this very civilized setting, we brought people together to exchange ideas. And then we found that we needed to actually take our work out of Prague and into the other countries, so we began to set up satellite centers. The Institute has always been very responsive and driven by the local needs. Uh, so it didn't come into the region with its own kind of set agenda. It was the fact that they were willing to get their hands dirty on the ground to marry up um, access at policy level um, in, in a sort of way that could have influence with real work on the ground. As the world's political and security landscape changed in the 2000s, the Institute reinvented itself again with a new global focus. The geopolitical situation changed dramatically. Uh, the realities that one was dealing with in terms of peace and security uh, changed, and the Institute adapted itself. The Institute uh, answered uh, and answered uh, one of the unique characteristics of the Institute is its proven skill in convening meetings between people who would not otherwise meet each other. For example, let's talk about the, the party to party talks with China. Jim Jones asked the Chinese, he said, what can we do to help you? And they said, well, we've never been able to have former relationships with the Democrat or Republican Party. And within 18 months, East-West delivered. We got in touch only in the year 2006, but EWI already became very known to many people in China. We had a, a, a very big impact on the question of ballistic missile defense, and by bringing together people from both sides to do a joint assessment on Iran's missile and nuclear capability, we were able to provide uh, a narrowing of the differences between the United States and Russia. The work that we started in 2007-2008 at the Track 2 level uh, helped set the stage for uh, the, uh, this, this administration to better understand what it is that was in the Russian mindset. We've taken the region of Southwest Asia, uh, primarily what's around Afghanistan, to, because we really believe that, that how that is resolved will be perhaps the greatest determinant of war and peace. Even I was astonished at the stakeholders that John Gunter got from Pakistan and from Afghanistan onto the negotiating table. Five years ago when I got involved in the board, we never would have, never would have just thought about cyber. This is something which is as important to us today as the nuclear revolution was a half century ago. And I think now cybersecurity is one area that is very important for the Institute. 
and the Institute did a big successful summit in Dallas. Here it is, and EWI is leading the charge. Through these three decades of radical change, the Institute's core mission has remained the same. It's about building trust. Building trust between people who normally don't want to do so at all. I think they have dared to try. EWI is always uh, somewhat ahead of the curve. It's because it is uh, very flexible, very willing to seize on an opportunity. Every organization gets down to the team. So there are three communities that really make EWI, uh, have made EWI. One is our board, one is our staff, and one of the donor communities. The most remarkable thing about this organization has been the board. A very strong, diverse board. The willingness of people to stand up, like Ira Wallach as co-founder, uh, Don Kendall, who twice took over as chairman, um, and also George Russell. It was a great honor to succeed George as chairman after his extraordinary tenure. Having a staff that is as uh, street savvy, as smart, as, um, uh, as, totally, as totally passionate about what they're doing um, is, has really been a very core piece of why we've been able to deliver what we deliver. Good people working on the right questions and trying both to think and to do. I became a big fan of uh, East West Institute uh, and uh, I, I still am and uh, I consider it to be a national asset. In October 2008, I took part in an East-West Institute forum on nuclear weapons, I want to thank the East-West Institute for its role in moving this vital agenda forward. The East-West Institute has managed to make the transition from Cold War institution to one that is examining and shedding light on some of the important issues of our time. The Institute has seen many changes over the past 30 years. But as it enters into its fourth decade, one thing is certain, that its work remains as relevant and as important as ever.